got nowhere left to go. You've got nowhere left to run. And pal, you got nowhere left to hide. Hulkamania dies tonight! <laughs> nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, Mr. Wonderful. I like that idea, man. The Supreme Court of Professional Wrestling, the cage, man. Let it be the judge. And if a mere mortal man like Hulk Hogan goes down, let it be. But Hulkamania, Mr. Wonderful, will be forever. Roddy Piper, do you remember when you did this to Adrian Adonis? Tonight I'm back, and it's payback time for adorable Adrian. Happy New Year, Roddy. George the Animal Steel, just what tonight do you have in store for the World Wrestling Federation's Intercontinental Champion, Randy Macho Man Sack? Surprise! Surprise? Surprise! I am the king of wrestling! And the junkyard dog, just like every other man, will learn to bow to me in servitude. <laughs> Hollerys, you want the dog to bow down to you? The dog don't bow down to no man. The only man is the good Lord above. Vocabulary too. Uh, I've been hitting the distant distance. It's all brand, brand new. new. Yeah. You're through. I'm in the planetary and like Doctor Who. Who, who. So who? Fuck your beef. No relief. I step on stage. Girls scream like I'm Keith. Oh wow! I almost forgot to turn the mic on. What's up, everybody? It's Ringtime Pro Wrestling. Keith is in the building, riding solo tonight. Uh, Keisha had some. Things her work schedule has changed, so it is going to alter how the program is delivered a little bit. Um, we took some time off to kind of get things adjusted. Also, uh, allergies was kicking my ass. I was supposed to do this like a couple of days ago, but hey, man, been kind of rough out there. Pollen is no joke, um, but on the bright side um, I debated whether to do this tonight but I figured uh, well this morning right now because actually it is 3 o'clock in the morning Eastern Standard Time um, it's not going to be a long show uh, we'll get you caught up on the week get you caught up on some things that we've been looking at talking about things that happened last week that worthy of mentioning this week and um, we're just going to roll it forward so without further ado we're going to get to this wrestling um the biggest news in the world of professional wrestling that's dropped in the last two weeks, of course, is Daniel Bryan is back. And what I mean by back is, hey, he has been cleared for in-ring competition. So, after three years and all the things that we know about his health issues and the doctors not clearing him and doctors not clearing him, he is cleared. Um, it's funny because... When the announcement happened last week, uh, I saw it, and I saw it came from WWE.com, and that was like, oh wow, like this is live, because, you know, there's been rumors, there's been sites, I mean, man, every ounce of speculation has came, uh, that he was going to go to New Japan, he was going to work at ROH, he was going to do this, he was going to do that, here's the thing, he was coming towards the end of that contract, Something had to happen. So, they knew they probably would lose him if he couldn't return to the ring. So, they had the doctors revisit the case. Now, I'm not saying that they had some hokey, because I don't believe that. I just believe they they probably didn't want the doctors even taking a look at it a year or two ago. But now that it's coming down to the deadline, it's like, alright, let him take a look at it. And I guess he's done all the right things and done what he's needed to do. Um... Uh, I think three years off has ser seriously helped his issues because uh, you got to remember it wasn't the neck that had him out for good it was the neurological issues the issues with the concussions and things of that nature 
So I think three years of not banging anything probably allowed him a better chance to return to a baseline that was reasonable. Um, and I mean, I'm not a medical expert. Hell, I don't even have a degree in anything remotely medical. So I'm just going to, but I, it's just my guess. I don't know. I am a former football player, if that matters. And I'll just say that because, hey man, at like 15 years of football, you got a good working idea of how almost every single injury works. But neither here nor there at the time. But Daniel Bryan back, man. Um, it was an emotional return. Uh, we have some audio that we're going to play. And we're going to break that down a little bit. Because uh, if not, why not, right? So let's go ahead and go to... <laughs> Sorry. Also, if you're any coughing the season through the course of this episode, just to stay man, your boy out here struggling, man. But uh, let's hear from Daniel. A little over two years ago, uh, when I was forced to retire, it was one of the hardest days of my life. But I, I focused on one thing: on being grateful. And I kept on focusing on trying to be grateful. So there were, there were times when I was depressed about not being able to do what I love to do, and I focused on being grateful. And there were times that I was angry and I was mad that I couldn't do what I love to do, and I focused on being grateful. And, and I have a lot to be grateful for. I have amazing family, I have amazing friends, I have the best fans in the world, and I also have an amazing, beautiful wife. And when I was depressed, and when I was angry, and I was trying to be grateful, and she saw that all I wanted to do was get back in the ring, she came to me and she said, it's wonderful that you're, you're grateful, but you need to fight. And you need to fight for your dreams. And, and over the last two months, I've asked WWE to relook at my case. And they sent me to the best neurologists all over the country. And all of these neurologists, every specialist, every doctor I've seen has said the same thing, and it is this. You are cleared. So I've got a lot of thank yous to say right now. First of all, I want to say thank you to the WWE and their doctors. Because first and foremost, they looked at me as the person and not me as the wrestler. And for that, I will be forever grateful for them. I also am grateful that they were willing to give my case a second look. For me to be out here to be able to say to you guys that yes, I am cleared. I want to say thank, thank you to every single person here, to every single person watching at home, because you guys have supported me for this entire time. And lastly, but not leastly, I would like to say thank you to Bree. I, uh, I don't think any of you truly understand how much she supported me over the last two years. And for that, I am incredibly grateful. So, now, 
on to the fun stuff, right? I don't know exactly when or where I will get back in this ring. Does, does that sound like a good idea? I don't know for sure if that's going to happen, but will Daniel Bryan compete in a WWE ring again? The man is back. Uh, one thing I take for that promo. He is so good with emotional connections. Like, Daniel Bryan is not the A1 talker of his generation. That being said, one thing he is always able to do with his promos is just give you that real life feel, right? Like, one thing I, I talked about to somebody about that particular promo was that, hey man, I know this stuff is quote unquote scripted or whatever you want to call it. I believe that dude. I believe him. I believe everything he said. And I got his back. You got to understand. Those yes chants have been going on for three years for a guy who hasn't been in the ring. Um, the SmackDown GM, well, what is that? Two years at best? Maybe a year and a half, something like that. So, just understand. Not been a long time doing that. It's so, through that, he still maintained that connection with the fans. Uh, I don't know if part of it just that they know how bad he really still wants to be there. But, this dude is instant money. Now, it totally overshadows everything else WrestleMania. But, I don't think that's a bad thing. Also, don't think that, uh, I mean, you kind of knew where it was going, right? The moment he got cleared, it's like, oh, wow, Shane got a tag team partner. That's like the first thing that clicks in. Now, follow up. You know, he he's cleared. Here come Kevin and Sammy. Daniel fires him. Because, I mean, you got to fire the guys who beat the hell out of the, the boss. And then they fired him. Oh, Daniel. Um, here's the thing. When I heard he was cleared, there was this cautious level of optimism that I had. Like, part of me was, like everybody else, extremely happy that he's back. But then there's the, like, I'm scared for him. And I know that sounds a little crazy, but here's the thing. We're dealing with a guy that had neurological issues. You, you just don't know when you mess with the brain and the sensitivity. And it's like, hey, man guy making money, he's still around the sport, maybe you can use him as an agent, whatever, he just had a baby, you know what I mean, like all that stuff kind of went through my head, and I was like, I, I just don't, here's the thing, as a fan, personally, I felt like I've had to reckon with some of the ideas about stuff, uh, this has happened with football too, right? My own time playing and stuff like that. Hey, what are we really doing here? Right? And if you haven't had this dilemma, no shade against you. Just something I've kind of dealt with, thought about. Uh, wrestlers in particular, being a fan, you accept that a lot of them go die young. A lot of them go have some problems. A lot of them. But I don't want my fandom. I don't know, I want to feel like, because this, this has nothing really to do with me, it has everything to do with him, and I think his desire to be back where he is, um, I don't want to be like, oh, I was cheered for this thing, and then if it go left, 
you know, I don't know. It's just just an eternal battle I'm having. Um, just something I had, just to figure out, air it out while I'm talking about it. Um, but on the other side of it, I was like, yo, this guy, he looks good. He been working out. He been training. But then, like when the attack happened with him and Sammy and Kevin, I don't know if I went to the full beat down. I may have went to him beating up Sammy and Kevin and then running off and leave Daniel standing. And then Daniel picked up the mic and said, you know what? You know what? Let's not worry about firing. How about this? You two versus me and Shane at WrestleMania. And it moved like that. Right? But that's not how they did it. That's fine. They got some more juice out of it because after the beatdown... Which was still scary. And hey, you did drop him on his head. It was like, oh God. Like we're going right into this the first day. But maybe that was a thing too. Like maybe he wanted to like, yo. I want them to know I'm back back. Like this ain't no like, they not messing around with me. I'm back back. I didn't tell anybody to go light. I didn't tell anybody to go. I'm back. So, there's that. But fast forward to this week. Uh... Daniel has another passionate emotional, pro, emotional promo, and uh, we got our match, right? Uh, the WrestleMania card is pretty much rounded out. I don't think we're going to add anything much to it. Uh, there will be guys who will announce they're going to the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Um, eventually, we'll find out Braun's tag team partner. But other than that, whew, I don't think we got much really to work with. Um... So, what I'm going to do is go down. This is going to be a little bit like our usual show, but slightly different. Uh, one, stuff that's old, I got to get you caught up on. Two, um, like I said, key shade here. I just kind of want to have something where we all reconnect to sit down to talk. Um, as you know, I, I went live because I thought about it. I was going to pre-record it and just put it out there, but hey man, the doors of the chat room are open, uh, come down to the altar, holla at us, anything, any questions, anything you want to get out there, do so be it, right, so, another thing that happened last week, not even this week in wrestling, Mark Henry, uh, was announced as what we got to believe is the final uh, entry in the 2018 Hall of Fame class. Now, after the previous week uh, and the previous announcement of the last person that they was putting in, this one feels good. Because y'all know how I felt about the Kid Rock thing. Um, hashtag fuck kid rock. That's that's something I've been putting out in total social media. Hashtag fuck kid rock. Um, and I, I I find him just easy to despise and dumb as fuck for a variety of reasons. And nothing burns me more than people saying he's from Detroit, right? First of all, I don't like people latching on to something trying to catch on. Because there's a thing, all right. I think there's a there's a noble association to say you're from Detroit, and what I mean by that is people identify hardworking people, auto workers, um, people who don't have a lot, but you know, grind it out and come with the with the best that they have and do the best that they can, and it, like it just. I think Detroit as a whole is probably one of America's greatest cities. And it's the idea of Detroit is probably one of the greatest ideas of what it could be, right? So it's a place where many African Americans migrated to to be a part of the auto industry and to escape some of the plights of the Jim Crow South. It's this place that has this strong multi-ethnic thing going on with these pockets of different people. Um, they brought their food. It's one of the best food cities you could probably ever um, be a part of. So, 
a lot of people try to latch on to that. Kid Rock from fucking Romeo. Romeo was about 45 minutes at best from Detroit. Uh, his dad was like a big time executive. Yada, yada, yada. Right? So, his whole image is built on like this grudgery rocker, you know, from, you know, hard times and, you know, uh, it's far full of shit. You know what I mean? So, that already bothers me. Like, for those of who don't know, Pontiac, Michigan native here, right? And one thing I, I didn't do, and I never have done since I've been an adult, when people ask me where I'm from, I don't say Detroit because it's like the closest city that y'all might know, right? Uh, plus, I think a lot of people know have heard, heard of Pontiac. If anything, you got the car to associate yourself with it, right? But, uh, one, I'm extremely proud of where I'm from. Like, you can't tell me nothing bad about the act. Nothing. So, let's just lay that out there first. Secondly, I'm not trying to ride on some, some other people's reputation. Like, you know, yeah, Detroit, That's it's a thing, it's a place. It's cool. But where I'm from is cool too. Um, but, if I were to lay that claim, I would say this. I have 200 times more right to lay the claim that Kid Rock does of claim with Detroit. Flat out. If you don't agree with me, hey man, fight me. It really doesn't matter. Uh, get your Twitter figures ready. Whatever you want to do. I really don't care. Because I, I know I'm right. And if you grew up in the metro Detroit area, you know I'm right too. So I'm saying... A kid from Oakland County feels like he has more claim to Detroit than Kid Rock, even though I just won't do it because that ain't where I'm from. It's close to where I'm from. That's all. So that's a, that's the thing. That's always a point of contention I've had with him. Secondly, the idea that he he was a rapper, motherfucker can't rap a gift. He had a horrible ass album that a bunch of people bought because in the late '90s, early 2000s, people was just buying records. Um, also, he was white. He claimed Detroit right at the time Eminem blew up. So, hey, people was hoping, hey, maybe they found the next Eminem or a bargain basement guy. I don't know. So, people bought that whack ass record. Um, he, then he went like rocker style slash country, and hey, people love him. If you like his music, I I just think you just happen to like a guy who you could have bought a cover band you know he's a guy who does impressions of the music that you probably th- that, that that's actually good right like I don't need a guy who tries to sound like Skinner I'll just listen to Skinner that's how I feel but neither here nor there right the point is they got it right with Mark Henry I think that's the thing I want to dial back to Mark Henry is probably one of the most deserving guys of this honor. And I wrote something up on the website. Check it out, ringtimeprowrestling.com. Um, Mark is one of those guys that I think is admirable. And if you follow his wrestling career, I think even if you're not a wrestling fan, you can appreciate his grind. And you can appreciate what he went through, how he got there. And you can appreciate... I think, like, just from a life lesson kind of thing. And I'll go to it. Mark um, is a two-time Olympian. He hit the Olympics in 92 and in 1996. Uh, He was signed in, like, 96 after those Olympics. Which, of course, they signed Kurt Angle after those Olympics also. Uh, So he comes in during the heat of the Monday Night Wars. He signed to a big lucrative deal. Um... and it's, I think he's one of the first people who have guaranteed money. He's one of the first guys. He's like the first developmental guy ever. Right? Now, because of his prowess and size and strength, uh, the guy is a world champion weightlifter. Like, one thing about this is, I want you to understand, world's strongest man was not a gimmick for Mark Henry. Like, that, it's legit. He is... Uh, he has so many world records and records that have stood 
I mean, to this day, in body, I'm not about in powerlifting, and it's drug free powerlifting. Like this is the drug tested powerlifting. This ain't like hey, you know, the dude coming in here who's 400 pounds with like a 28 inch waist. It ain't this. No, nah, this these guys are the legit of the legit, and uh, at the top of it, it's Mark Henry. So. Because in wrestling, I think a lot of times you get gimmicks, and it's like, oh, this guy's an African prince. Hey, this guy is a lawyer. This guy's a thing, or whatever. This guy is, no, nah, no, nah, Mark Henry, 100% legit. Now, mind you, wrestling already had a strong man, like as far as legacy goes. Kipater was very legit in himself, Olympian, all that stuff, right? Just to give you for some perspective, I don't think Ken has as nowhere near as many records as Mark Henry. I'm just saying. Uh, but the guy won a bunch of competitions, man. Uh, strong man and weightlifter, which are two different things. I want you to understand this. Strong man competitions are, I mean, you, you catch them on ESPN where the guy's pushing boulders, the guy's dragging a truck, get all that stuff. Powerlifting is actual weightlifting and moving the weight. I mean, like his deadlifts and his squats and stuff like that, man. The stuff that he puts up are like car level, right? <laughs> like this guy could pull your car out of the ditch. I mean, it's like that. Um, but yeah, like I really, you should look up the bio, um, the Arnold Classic, a lot of stuff that he's done. Uh, in 2012, he was inducted to the International Sports Hall of Fame for his exploits uh, in the world of powerlifting and strongman. Um, like I said, the guy is well deserved. But through all of that, he he was dedicated to professional wrestling. Because here's the thing: a lot of people with those kind of accolades, and especially I had the early career that Mark Henry had, because it was a lot of hit and misses. Right? You gotta remember his first matches on pay per view. Against Jerry Lawler. Now having your first match against Jerry Lawler. You can learn a lot. And it's helpful because Jerry can carry you. Problem is. Is that it's on pay per view. On Broadway. It's like hey. I'm going to do my first ever play. And not only am I not going to rehearse. I'm just going to read it all. And then go out to Broadway. And perform. No. Um. Like being a comic, right? I'm taking this from my own personal life. You go to open mics. You go out to places. You grind your material. You find out what works. You find out what doesn't work. You work it out in these little small rooms. And hey, you go eventually take it to bigger rooms. And it goes up the ladder. Hey man, your first set don't need to be in Madison Square Garden. You know what I mean? Like it just don't. And that was, that was the thing with Mark. So, there was a... That started it. But, hey, he had some gimmicks that worked. He had some gimmicks that didn't work. Uh, being a part of the Nation of Domination. Can't ever take that away from him. He was a part of one of probably the most dominant cliques that ever was. Um, the push. They, they always kept him in a mid-card fashion. Like, I don't think they ever really allowed them to have the main event push. Even when The Rock was surging. Like, it didn't really put the group in the main event. They all still kind of hovering around that big card. But that that's to be expected, I guess. Um, but I think you learned a lot there. Um, those of you who remember the sexual chocolate gimmick, <laughs> which, hey man, I don't know of things that are any funnier than uh, sexual chocolate. Now, it's kind of weird, too, because the thing with the sexual chocolate gimmick was um, at its outside of it, not totally bad, right? On the fringes, not 100% horrible. Uh, but, like, like re-examining it, and going back over stuff over the past few years. Oh man. I, I don't know. 
wrestling fans, I don't know. I don't know what we was doing. Because, uh, hey man, that, that stuff was weird. Um, and, you know, there was these things about, like, he, you know, his confessions with uh, D'Lo. It was just, like, weird. Like, it was like, all right, yeah. Uh, I was a sex addict. I had sex with my sister. It's just, I don't know. Go back through it. Don't really want to rehash it. But, anyway. He still made it work. Um, I think sexual chocolate culminated with uh, Mae Young giving birth to a baby hand. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, that kind of happened. But... You know, gotta gotta appreciate that he made tried to make that work. Um, after that, after a little while, he went back. To, he went to the developmental. Now, here's something that I think nobody gives him enough credit for. That guy had already been to the promised land. He already been at the top. They told him, "Hey, man, you got to go back to the developmental." And you're like, alright. And he does it. And he does it with a good attitude by all accounts. Um, he took care of the boys when he was down in developmental. Bought an air conditioner for the locker room. Because, hey, I don't need y'all in this locker room sweating to death. It's hot down here in Louisville. So, just something to think about. Uh, but he went back to pay his dues. And he learned his craft. It came up. And then he started finding gimmicks that worked. Now, mind you. He got he had a lot of injuries throughout the course of his career. Um, and I think that derailed some of the greatness that was available to him. But for the most part, man. Like I said, he kept coming back. Kept coming back. And then, like I would say from 2004 on. He's always was upper mid. Semi main event. Hell, main event. A lot of times. Whether he was successful or not in capturing the title. I mean that was like. He was always a legitimate force. And hey. If you needed your world champion. To appear to be in danger. Like your baby face champ. No better guy than Mark Henry. Why? Because he's the world's strongest man. And once he developed the hall of pain. Boom you in there. Um, his run as ECW champion. I think was really good. Uh, and having Tony Atlas as a manager, I think, was a great uh, addition for both guys. Um, when he beat Orton at Night of Champions to be world champ, hey, believe it, SmackDown, I don't, the ratings weren't struggling, but they weren't great at the time. The ratings went up when Mark had that belt. That run, his run, it sparked a little bit of ratings. Um, now, of course, you know, he loses the title out of Daniel Bryan Cash in, which is his own thing. But, hey, man, the guy has had an incredible career and definitely worthy of this induction. Um, just glad that, like, you know, somebody's getting acknowledged and they're getting acknowledged while they're alive. And, you know, the guy still got his health. He's still moving around. He's um, a producer right now with the company. And the guy um, is an incredible ambassador for the company. Like when they need somebody to go out and go somewhere and represent somebody at some kind of international competition, especially stuff that's like athletic events, they see Mark Henry a lot of times. And that guy does a really good job for them doing that. So that's it. Just wanted to throw that one out there. Um, last week, I already got to rehash it too much from the wrestling part of it because when as I talked through this week, I can hit the points from last week. So, let's take it over to Raw, right? Brock and Paul open up the show. Now, last time we talked, Brock and Paul wasn't showing up. So, this is what happened in the meantime. Last week, Roman Reigns showed up to Raw. He was bad. Told Kurt Angle, hey man, what's going on out here? I bet you Brock ain't even here. Da da da. Kurt, like, hey man. You've been suspended. You were suspended the week before. You ain't supposed to be here. Your ass need to get out of here. Now, 
Because I did watch the very beginning, I don't know if Roman came down the ramp or not. But he was he was dressed in full wrestling gear. I know wrestling is predetermined and scripted, right? But my pet peeve, especially with the WWE, is they don't fucking try. Just because something isn't one way don't mean you need to lax on your effort. You still need to present it as if it's what you want them to feel and see. So, with a Roman Reigns, if the guy suspended truly, he cannot come in the building, right? All y'all been suspended for some, somewhere before. Well, I don't say all y'all, but shit. People been suspended somewhere before. Work, school, whatever. As soon as you hit the door, they don't let you in. They're like, hey, man, nah. So, how about you put Roman in some street clothes and just be sitting out in the crowd? Then, have him try to get the barricade or whatever. He can't get over the barricade either because the police in the bar are like, hey, what up? Make sure he flashes ticket stub just to show, hey, man, I paid to get in here. I could be here. Then, somebody gets him a mic because... No, that, hey, that they, they get over for being disruptive. Roman talks and say, hey, man, I'll raise see Brock. Then they invite him in the ring. They tell him, look, you, now they can try to tell him, like, you trespass. We know you're here. Get him out of here. Then you can throw the cuffs on him, which that's the, they threw the cuffs at the U.S. Marshals. Then while Roman Reigns is cuffed, and they're beating up the U.S. Marshals while he's cuffed. Uh, Brock comes down, and Brock beats the holy hell out of Roman Reigns, who tried to pick up a chair, but Roman Reigns is handcuffed, and, you know, Brock Lesnar is dangerous enough if you have all your full capabilities, but Roman was a little helpless. Even though I was hoping for a super Roman moment where Roman just snaps and breaks the handcuffs. I mean, it ain't anything less absurd than anything they've done. Uh, but yeah, so Roman and Brock... Well, Brock beats the hell out of Roman. Uh, Roman's wheeled out of there. Uh, they kept attacking him. Here's one thing that you know gets your baby faces in trouble, WWE. When a guy is getting physically assaulted by the guy who's probably supposed to be the heel because the guy ran down, beat you up while you're handcuffed, and then hit you with chairs while you're handcuffed. If the fans are not are not booing and they chant one more time for the guy to get hit with something again, Y'all Mr. Mark, man. <laughs> Y'all Mr. Mark. What? Well, so this week, Brock and Paul open up the show. Now, this week, when Roman isn't suspended, but just beat up, hey, man, he shows up and walks through the crowd. It shows up through the crowd to co confront Brock for the, in the ring. Ah, man, people. Uh, Roman gets beat up again. He's obviously injured because and he's gonna take this beatings all the way up to WrestleMania because we're gonna have a super Roman moment. Uh Nia Jax defeated Mickey James in singles competition because if not, why not? Uh Nia will be facing Alexa Bliss for that world championship. Uh the video package for WrestleMania with Triple H and Stephanie and Stephanie and Triple H training, I thought was very good. Uh, set the tone. Got you believing that, hey man, there might be a shot somewhere. Uh, so there's that. Uh, Cedric Alexander, Mustafa Ali, defeat Drew Gulak and Tony Nese. Uh Cedric and Mustafa both will be competing for the championship at WrestleMania. So, see how that goes. Uh, the Miz crew sets up Finn, uh, Rollins and Baylor on Miz TV. Uh, I thought it was a good segment. Uh, Miz was getting down on the Miz Rollins and Bay Baylor came out there I thought they were stirring the pot and really it was just a setup for a 3 on 2 attack um, I thought it was funny too because which it was an attack but then Gallows and Anderson came down and then you know everything evened out and got better but I, thought, I still thought it was good thought it was funny um, Miz had some shots Dallas and Axel wasn't having it. Hey, Miz said he was going to be the greatest Intercontinental Champion ever. Better than Bret Hart. Better than uh, Macho Man. Better, you know, he didn't include Honky Talk Man, which I thought was kind of cold. Uh, better than Mr. Perfect. And then Curtis Axel turned around because he got mad. Like, hey, take that back. Which, hey, yeah. 
Are we doing that? Um, also, coincidentally, Curtis Axel, former Intercontinental Champion. But neither here nor there. Uh, also, with Miz, him and Maurice had the baby. They had a little baby girl. Uh, congratulations, Miz and Maurice. Uh, that's good stuff, man. It's always exciting bringing a life into the world. Uh, which this week, what the newest member of the Hope Foundation may be showing up. So this week and next week. Uh, Messiah, we are waiting. Um, Oscar defeated uh, Jobber. Uh, Woke Matt Hardy let us know he entered the Battle Royal. Sasha and Bailey had enough of each other. They fought backstage. The unfortunate part of that, both of them just going to be in the Battle Royal at WrestleMania, and they probably won't have a WrestleMania match, which I think they would have tore it down. Uh, Braun Strowman defeated Sheamus this week. So his uh, sweep of the tag team champions and solo competition is completed. Uh, we still don't have a partner. Uh, suggestions probably coming. Uh, Absolution uh, showed up while Kurt Ronda Rousey was talking, and they all got tossed up. Uh, so that happened. Uh, Gallus and Ida should beat the Miz to Raj. Elias defeated Rhino. Look out for Elias, possibly his Braun's partner. Uh, John Cena defeated Kane in a no DQ match. How do we get here? Last week, John Cena called out the Undertaker again. Kane came out instead of Undertaker and choke slam Cena. Probably the best ending you could have had to that. Well, this it was called for a match. But uh, yeah, here's my thing with Cena, Kane, Taker, that kind of thing. I'm tired of the I I don't know the Cena promos about this just are annoying. Um, nothing has to be on his side, and also I just like leave well enough alone. Like we don't need to mess with Undertaker's legacy. We don't need to mess with none of that, man. And why are we fucking with it? Because what y'all won't see to beat Taker at WrestleMania, they ain't gonna do that for either one of them. Those careers are where they are. So, I mean, Taker could win, but then, you know, I don't know. Hopefully they find something different. Anywho, uh, this is where we're going to probably do our first break. And we'll come back. I'll talk about some of the crazy things that's happened out in these streets. And uh, that's it, man. We'll be back. Um, it's such a I know it's gonna be good to you. Yeah. And I'll tell you why, baby. Baby, it's time that you know uh, my love is growing. And I just can't pretend anymore. Because my love is
We are back. Um, that song, Sexual Chocolate. Funny, 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 funny. Like, one thing about wrestling themes is that you listen to them, and you only listen to them in like 12 second to 40 second clips. Because they just got to walk to the ring. You catch some of it and listen to the song, it's like, this is crazy. And they were singing their ass off, man. Like, they was like, yo, we gonna make this work. This gonna be our big break. Um, Mark has had some wonderful theme songs also. Uh, the most recent, the one he's been using the most time, the 3 6 Mafia. Somebody go get their ass kicked. Is like, all right. Like, this is, this is, uh, this is real. And the shot that they used to do over his back. Before he entered the ring, like, whoo! Like, it's like, all right. Like, I don't want any of them kind of problems. But, uh, yep, yeah, let me go here. And, uh, it's birthday time. We are at the end of March. What? Damn, 2018 already, huh? Right? First quarter in the, in the books. <laughs> uh, today is March 30th. So, let me give you a little bit of a recap. Two days ago was March 28th, which was a Wednesday, two days ago. Uh, A lot of wrestlers were born. I mean, good guys, too, right? Mustafa Ali, current uh, 205 Live Star, had a birthday on Wednesday. Dude turned 32. Uh, The Warlord, uh, one half of the powers of the pain, Warlord the Barbarian. Warlord uh, turned 56. Um, Umaga, the late Umaga, would have been 45 uh, Wednesday if he was still around. And um, on top of that, Hall of Famer, Mr. Perfect, Curtis Axel Day, would have been 60 on Wednesday if he was still with us. Um, yesterday, the 29th, we only had one birthday, not uh, which is Michael Hayes. Fabulous free bird, Michael Hayes. Um, you got to get that. The only guy I really give a pass with the Confederate flag. <coughs> which I haven't seen him with in the last 30 years, but I'm just saying. Only dude I ever gave a pass for. It. Only dude. Today is March 30th. Um... Some birthdays. Uh, one Zach Gowan, uh, former SmackDown star, uh, independent star, uh, one-legged wrestler. Um, Trent Beretta celebrates a birthday today on Friday. So if you go on Twitter, hit Trent up. And last but not least, Mike IRS Rotunda turned sixty today. Who is Mike Rotunda? Well. He is like IRS Mike Rotunda. He is Captain Mike Rotunda. Mike Rotunda from the Varsity Club. Um, Michael Wall Street, uh, which evolved to IRS, Erwin R. Scheister. Um, the tax man, one half of the tag team Money Inc. With Ted DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man. Uh, Bray Wyatt's daddy. Bray Wyatt and Bo Dallas's daddy. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Rotunda, dead hand in his own right, uh, married a young lady who happened to be the sister of one Barry and Kendall Wyndham, uh, which means she's also the daughter of Black Jack Mulligan. Uh, wow. So, one, shout out to Rotunda, who was a shooter, um, you know, guy from, uh, Syracuse, uh, wrestler school uh, not Syracuse wrestler school but he was a collegiate wrestler at Syracuse uh, but hey Blackjack was still pretty active in the 80's uh, you go around and say you about to date Blackjack daughter you you you, you better be uh, you better be ready that's all I'm saying and you definitely go marry her. You ain't. I'm sure you probably not gonna be out here dilly dallying just with uh, 
Blackjack's daughter. Um, that being said, also, uh, Barry Wyndham was his tag team partner. Uh, U.S. Express. You might remember them for, I think, WrestleMania 1. Uh, they had an early time in WWF. Uh, but, yeah, so there's uh, Rotundo. Uh, tomorrow is April 1st. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's Sunday. Because tomorrow's the 31st, which is Saturday. Uh, Easter is coming down. So, uh, Randy Orton will be celebrating his birthday on Easter. Uh, Jesse Sorsen will be celebrating his birthday on Easter. So, that, that's happening. So, that's the birthdays. Uh, new who's. So, out here in these streets, they basically was like, hey, Shane McMahon has been hospitalized. He has diverticulitis. Uh, it's dangerous. Da, 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 da. Apparently, that's kayfabe. It was put out by WWE. Apparently, it ain't real. They decide when it could be real and fake. How I know it ain't real? Because ain't no way in hell he'd be wrestling at WrestleMania. Unless they just want to name the match and then put somebody else in there. But ain't no way in hell he wrestled at WrestleMania for all that stuff was wrong with him. He had like a spinal issue and they was going to have surgery and all this stuff. Bullshit. But uh, that's neither here nor there. Um... Uh, Paul Heyman will induct Goldberg into the WWE Hall of Fame. I think that's an interesting choice. Now, where it works is that if you judge Goldberg's career against strictly the WWE, WWF tenure, Paul is Goldberg's big nemesis because he supports Brock. And that goes back to 2004, right? So... Paul has a thing. And, hey man, you telling me y'all giving Paul Heyman the microphone at the Hall of Fame to talk for a few minutes before a guy? Yeah, it's going to be epic. Yeah, it's going to be epic. Uh, Paul's the kind of guy you won't do in your eulogy. I feel like Paul can preach you into heaven. Yes, neither here nor there. Um... Women will not compete at the uh, WWE Greatest Royal Rumble event, which I didn't think about, but it makes sense. Okay, now he made a lot of strides because the women competed in Dubai, and it's one of the first times they've ever competed in Dubai. And you know, they had the first ever women's title match that was held in United Arab Emirates. Saudi Arabia is a different place, uh, you know, UAB is uh. You know, it's New Wave, it's progressive, it's all these four people who got these different, you know, they want to do different fun stuff, right? Nobody ever talks about, like, Dubai out of the context of fun. Saudi Arabia ain't that. So, that is a little weird as hardware. They, they weren't messing around. So, there's no women's match of any variation to be all the guys at, on the Saudi Arabia trip. And that's fine. You know. Some places just have <laughs> regressive ideas. Um, moving on to SmackDown. Because I, I want to leave some time for Strong Style Evolved. Because that went down Sunday. And wow. Uh, I thought it was cool. So, like I was going to try to watch it anyway. I didn't know it was short on AXS. So I was going to try to watch it on my app. And they like, hey man, it's, uh, it ain't going to be available to view on the app until... The next day, because you're in the United States, and mind you, it's New Japan performing in the United States. But I turn, you know, I saw people tweet, tweet about it or whatever, and I turned the TV over to AXS, and I'm like, this is all right now. So it ain't even like a pay per view per se. And they gave away for free on, on AXS. But, wow. Four hours. Let's go. Let's get it. And they got it. So I guess I'm just talking about it now. Maybe I can recap SmackDown later. Because this is from Sunday. So this is earlier in the week. So it deserves more attention. Um, all in all. I thought it was a great showing. Um, of course they sold out that place in Long Beach fairly quick. Because New Japan will sell stuff out. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll just do a brief overview, overview of the call. The card. I see I'm getting kind of. I'm dragging it out a little bit. So, yeah, man. Quick overview. 
and then we'll go. Uh, Jim Ross and Josh Barnett caught the show. I don't have a problem with Jim Ross. I'm going to say that out loud in front of the world. But I say it because some of y'all internet fans just be hard as hell on him. Hey, man, that's an old dude from Oklahoma. Some of these Japanese pronunciations, he not going to nail. But for the most part, hey, man, he's still that guy. Like, he is still, like, the commentator. Like, he is still the dude who can who drive it home. I mean, outside of Gordon Soley, it Jim Ross' name is up there with, like, the best that ever got behind that thing. There ain't too many other people you could throw in there. Um, I like the chemistry of some teams. Like, I like Gorilla and Jesse. Um, I, I, I like they click when they, when they go back and forth. Like, when it was their... Yeah, I I thought I thought there was a good commentary. I thought they told the story. They got it out there how they should. Um, so it's the follow up to the G one special from last year. Um, but we're gonna go through the matches. Uh, Rapagi three K uh, defeated SoCal Uncensored. Um, great six man match uh, to Ju. To Gucci Japan uh, defeated Chaos in a tag team match. Uh, I thought it was good for the U.S. audience to see Juice Robinson. That's one of those people I think you got to get familiar with because I mean I I think this guy has a high ceiling and I think he's got something ahead of him. Uh, Killer Elite Squad, which they won a tag match, which I I want to say <sighs> probably one of my favorite tag teams right now. And they just physically have that imposing look. Like when you look at Lance Archer, you're like, oh wow, he's, he's that, that guy, like he can hurt something. And did Davey. Good to see Davey back. Um, when, I first time, when I watched this team for the first time, I think it was at TakeOver. Not TakeOver, I'm sorry, at um, Wrestle Kingdom. And I was like, oh. And then even up to now, I'm like, this kid looks good. Um, he's found himself in the in the sport, you know. Coming from that legendary family, I know it has to be hard, and I know like there's a certain level of expect- expectations and idea of what you should should not be and what you should should not do, and it doesn't always work out. I'm glad that kid stayed level, and it's working out for him. Um, a Bullet Club matchup per se, as uh, Cody and Marty Scroll. Defeated uh, Gorillas of Destiny. Um, only problem I have with that match is that Gorillas of Destiny lost. Um, in favorite tag teams of all the promotions right now, uh, GOD might be the one for me right now. Like, I, the Usos are up there. I have no disrespect to the Usos. But, hey, man. I, I think GOD got it. I would love to see them back with the belts. Um, they are the sons of Haku, which that in itself is what it is, right? So, they've, they've been a part of some good things, and uh, yeah, I the fact that they lost, I thought, was the, the, the thing that bothered me. Uh, Los Ignobles, Japan, uh, defeated Taguchi, Japan. Um, Los Ignobles is probably the premier up and coming faction over there. Because the Bullet Club is like pretty much about to wrap it up. Uh, but they have the they have the hot young guys. Uh, Takahashi, Bushi, Sonata. Who, hey man, when I saw him in TNA back in the day, I didn't expect all of this. And uh, Naito, winner of the G1 Climax. And probably is going to be looking for that world title sometime soon. Um, Taguchi Japan got Tanahashi, Kashida. I mean, I think they are more trending to an older audience between the Japanese guys. Uh, Will Ospreay uh, defeated Jushin Liger in a match. And I say the same thing every time I see Liger. Wow, man. Wow. Like, you gotta think about it. First time I ever heard Jushin Liger, he wrestled Flying Brian Pillman in WCW, and that might have been the late 80s. 
that guy still do it? Uh, maybe, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So that was that match. Um, Suzuki Gun, uh, which is Moro Suzuki and Zack Sabri, um, defeated Chaos in a tag match, which Chaos had the legendary Kushida Okada and uh, Ishii. Um, the Os- uh, the Zack Sabri uh, match with Okada, we'll see that probably sooner than later. Uh, Jay White defeated Hangman Page um, for the U.S. Heavyweight title. Um, kind of semi-main thing. Uh, I'm going to say this. Switchblade is damn good. Since he came back to New Japan, like, I really watched him in ROH. I just remember when he came back, Challenge I, like, this guy's put on some really good matches. I mean, but yeah, I think Jay White did a really good job. Um, match of the night, of course, Golden Lovers, Kenny Omega, and Kota Ibushi. They defeated the Young Bucks. Um, here's what I'll say with this match. It was a lot going on, and it went long. Because, I mean, the show's supposed to go off at 12. I'm like, it's 12.05. We're still here. Um... It went long, but it was a hell of a story told. Uh, Kenny Omega was just struggling, struggling with an inner conflict. Could he do it? Could he really, you know, be that vicious guy and kick the head off and knock out his best friends? Um, Abushi helped him through a lot of it, but it was a lot of good storytelling. And you gotta, if you don't pull up any other match from the show, is is that pull up that main event? Um. I like the inner conflicts between Matt and Nick Jackson. Um, when one guy's kind of like, hey man, do what you got to do. The other guy's like, this is so bullshit for you to be in here. This guy ain't going to take care of a snowboard. Nah, you gotta, you gotta. Like, it was. Yeah, so. Um, watch it. That's all I can tell you. Um, Smackdown. So let's get to SmackDown, and we can. I'm I'm gonna get out of here because I'm getting kind of tired. And obviously, you've heard the last few comments. I've missed stuff. I'm just kind of like, uh, uh, Rusev and Jinder Mahal defeated Randy Orton and uh, Bobby Roode. Um, Orton and Roode suffered from massive miscommunication um, throughout the match, and you know, they don't particularly they didn't particularly care for each other in the storyline. So. I think it was good that it worked out that way, but Rusev uh, got the pin in the match. So him and Jinder won, and Rusev is trying to get added to the U.S. title match, which I think is the most logical choice. Rusev Day! Like, that guy, he's deserving. He put his he put himself in the right spot. Um, so, there's that match. Um... Going in, um, Becky Lynch defeated Ruby Riot, which I don't know, man. I don't know how I felt about that. I thought it was a decent match, but I think Ruby could have used that win. She's not going back to the bait of it anytime soon, but I think just why not? What? Because I don't think you want to do anything with Becky anytime immediately. So I think it's just. So yeah, there's that. Uh, Daryl Bryant and it's to his WrestleMania challenge. We already kind of talked about that. The New Day uh, was supposed to face the Bludgeon Brothers. New Day was back healthy for the first time in a long time. The match ended in the chaos because the Usos showed up, and uh, that leads us to a triple threat at WrestleMania for the SmackDown titles with the Usos, the Bludgeon Brothers, and New Day. Uh, that's gonna be fun. That's that's gonna be. A good one. Uh, Dolph Ziggler defeated Tyler Breeze in solo action. Uh, so Dolph defeated Dolph Jr. Uh, that match, uh, Dolph kind of wouldn't run at Andre Giant Memorial Battle Royal. So, uh, there you know. Um, 
Nakamura defeated Shelton Benjamin in singles action. Um, AJ was there down by the ring because, I mean, they got to watch each other back heading up to WrestleMania, make sure nothing stupid happens. Uh, AJ looks better. Um, so I think he's, whatever that injury was, I think he just needed to kind of stay out of the action for a while and let it heal. But he's done that. So good for him. Um, and that's it, man. That's what I got for this week. Um, next week, I don't know how we're going to do all the shows because this is what I want to do. I want to cover ROH Super Cod of Honor. NXT TakeOver, WrestleMania, uh, jamming it all in one one show probably wouldn't be the greatest idea because y'all got it like an hour or two hours at a time to do stuff. I ain't trying to, you know, hog up the whole day. Um, what I would, I don't know, but what we're going to do, we'll figure it out. We'll probably put out multiple shows over the course of next week. Uh, Keisha might be back with me Sunday or something like that just so she can get something in and uh, let you know where she's at and what's going on and uh, after work no so uh, yeah I'm going to end this show um it was nice. Um, me and Keisha will be back uh, one of these days. And then, you know, you'll hear from us both here and there. Uh, I may have her do some pre recorded audio and get it out to the masses. But um, for the most part, as we're transitioning, uh, we're still here. And we love this wrestling. If you got any thoughts or suggestions, hit us up on Twitter. At ringtimepodcast.com. You can email us at k eight k holt at ringtimeprowrestling.com. Um, you can follow us on various social media platforms. We have a Facebook page, comment, like it. Um, and without that, we are available on a variety of platforms iHeartRadio, Stitcher, TuneIn. Uh, Spreaker itself, iTunes, it doesn't matter. We probably listed just about every podcast directory you could think of. So, um, with that being said, we I am out and see y'all in maybe a couple of days. Who knows? Peace. <laughs>